hey, 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 it is me, MBT Sky. And so I decided for fun that I wanted to do a reading on the solar eclipse, Easter, the fact that it's a leap year, and the earthquake that we experienced over here on our side of the earth. So to start, we're looking at the date of the solar eclipse, which is going to be on the 8th which brings us to 2036 and 11 and 2. Now, being that 2036 came up, I figured it would be fun to see what the energy is going to look like on the same day in 2036. So, first off, it puts... Right now, we in the moon. So I decided, let me look for the moon in 2036. The moon lands in the Virgo. Now... Breaking down the date, we got the four, which is the month, and that's Saturn energy. That's what process and stabilization. Then we have uh, Mars coming up for the day, which is success, power, and achievement, which is a good thing. When you think about it, um, you know, solar eclipse brings a lot of uh, a lot of energy, and when you're dealing with the Mars energy, you know it's pretty damn aggressive meanwhile it still comes up in 11 and 2 so we're dealing with the eclipse the moon is covering the sun the frequency is together the moon is blocking the sun so if you're looking at this uh energetically and this is something that does not happen often Right, you have these two energies. You have this fire energy and this water energy that comes together. And clearly the water is muting out the fire energy right there. So therefore, you're gonna deal with um people probably will be in higher emotions than usual, more tapped in spiritually than usual, more hypersensitive than usual during the time of the eclipse and of course they say oh you know you have to be concerned about power outages and so on and so forth and this that and third during the solar eclipse but mostly you know when you're thinking about the solar eclipse it probably would be a good time during the eclipse the actual process for stabilization success power and achievement meanwhile going all the way into 2036 the moon of course is representing the water and is landing in virgo which is the earth which is a good time for growth it's a good time for building. It's a good time, you know, and when you're dealing with, you know, Virgos like to get money. Virgos, you know, they get into stuff. That's what they do. Put a Virgo in the emotions and, you know, you kind of get a iffy situation. So you probably have that type of, that type of energy dealing with uh, Virgos, Cancers, people like that. That's all the way in 2036. Now, going into Easter, right? I did a previous post on Easter explaining that when you numerically break the number Easter down, you get Mercury. Opposed to a star, which, you know, is the pagan holiday associated with Easter, which it breaks down into the moon, right? So I was discussing how even that slightest thing when we put our energy into into that particular word, you kind of bring in the vibration off. So anyway, I'm looking at Easter with, for this year, which is uh, March 31st, 2024, which equals out to 2058, which then equals out to uh, 15 and 6, which brings you into Venus energy, right? Now, it still comes down to 3, which is the Jupiter which is that uh, communi uh, communicator and the creative creative expression and growth. And then we have Saturn. Mind you, you know, there was times where they said that, uh, you know, Saturn was the first sun and people have those arguments. But as you can see, even in here is a beef between the planetary bodies any old ways. But anyway, bringing success, power, and achievement, again, is the same similar energy. And you're going to see it again one more time. Now, looking into 2058, on the same day, you see Venus lands in Taurus. 
Now, you know, the family sharing a home kind of organizing and structure, you know, the Taurus is the bullheaded one, stubborn, you know, they, well, fake stubborn, as you see when Venus is there, fake stubborn. But in the future, it would be more so about being more determined to maintain order, to bring family sharing and stability into place through communication at the same time. Now, looking at the leap year, the leap year is, is matching with Issa, which is 15 and 6, and it's Venus. And that's still talking about the family nurturing kind of energy. So it's matching what was going on during Easter, right? Now, the leap day was uh, February 29th, 2024, coming into... 20 uh equaling out to 2055 which is equal now to uh 12 and 3 which brings you to jupiter fire energy and then you have the breakdown so you have the moon here which is still matching you got the moon there you got the moon over there so you matching this solar eclipse energy on the leap year then you have the 29 which comes in 11 2 which is matching the solar eclipse on a leap year. So therefore, we already know that this little uh, process, this is what like a, a two two month, let's just say around it all, two month difference, which brings you into the two anyway, right? Still in that higher frequency, regardless of the fact. Now, when you're dealing, like I told you, dealing with you, uh, Jupiter, you're dealing with the communication Dealing with the moon, though, you're dealing with, what, duality, partnerships, emotions, and then you're dealing with intuition, spirituality, and hidden knowledge. So, you know, in between this time, it's probably going to be people or, or situations where things may get revealed or, again, people are uh, highly, uh, higher, higher spiritually uh, tapped in. Pay attention because you're going to see how it comes up again. Now, we got the earthquake that just took place, and that was uh, April 5th, 2024, which brought us, oh, hold on, mind you, before I go here, Jupiter lands in Capricorn on February 29th of 2055, so that's that fire, earth type of energy, that's a lot of movement, a lot of action, a lot of creative, a lot of growth. You know, that's the time to get the building stuff, creating stuff, you know, being a little bit, you know, tapping into your art side and all that other good stuff. It's a good time to to grow over there in that area. That's a long time from now, but it's just interesting to look at and still being at 11 and 2. So then you have the earthquake that just took place, which is what, April 5th, 2024, which comes to uh, 2033 which brings you to eight. That's going to talk about uh, Mars. You got Mars and Saturn. Now, mind you, again, like I told you, we got the Mercury. Mercury is a discussion of the change, flexibility, and freedom. Wait, did I say, wait, hold on. Let me make sure I'm not bugging. I don't know why I said Mercury. Oh, yeah, because Mercury is down here for the uh, fifth day. But as far as Mars is concerned, you have uh, the, su the success, power, and achievement thing coming up again, which is matching the solar eclipse, right? So now the month is Saturn. The day is Mercury. And that's change, freedom, and, and, and sensation, which you, def you definitely felt sensation going on during the earthquake. Now, in the future... Mars lands in Sagittarius. This is double fire energy. When you're dealing with the, the double fire, it's going to be a lot of aggressive energy, a lot of want to get to it energy. Sagittarius is, our, you know, they tend to be uh, highly sexual. So it might be that time where Sagittarius have that high sexual energy concern. Now, how do we look at this? How do I feel like it's like affecting the solar? How did it 
how does this all come together? If we all uh, put an energy kind of in the wrong in the wrong direction, it's gonna cause a vibration. Then you have this high spiritual, intuitive, emotional energy that goes on during you know or takes place or could take place during the solar eclipse. We bring up all that energy in here. We got the earthquake. Not to mention that there's wars going on, political beefs going on, people running for president going on, people trying to reestablish businesses going on, people losing businesses going on, all kinds of stuff going on. And all of that energy, bow, it gets you a nice little earthquake. Not to mention whatever else is going on in the world of science and everywhere else, right? So, therefore, I decided I was going to look into it a little bit more. Saturn came up three times. Saturn pops up on a wheel, what, uh, two times, one uh, in the earth and in the air. So I'm looking at like the three of swords, so that people may experience, you know, heartbreak, disappointment, stuff like that. And then you have the three of coins, you know, where is a discussion of building, working together. Now, that might be areas that people uh, have an issue in. Now, let's look at Jupiter that comes up two times. And, you know, two usually generally is about finding balance or trying to balance out. But it's a fire energy. So you're looking at the two of wands, deep contemplation, time to think and plan ahead, looking at what's going to happen in the future, right? Then you're dealing with Mars, and that comes up in the water, and it comes up in the fire. So it brings the two of cups, the two of wands, so therefore... You know, dealing with the Mars energy, you might have situations, relationships, partnerships, business partnerships, things like that, where there'll be deep contemplation, choices that need to be made, standing on one's ground, all of that good stuff going on within uh, partnerships, relationships, and so on and so forth. Mercury comes up one time, once in the, uh, for the Earth and once for the air. That's the Ace of Coins and the Ace of Swords. So, therefore, that would be the gift of communication the, the uh, for the Swords. The gift of communication, contracts, agreements, so on and so forth. That's the gift from the universe. The One of Coins, the gift of wealth, money, prosperity, happiness, physical happiness, health happiness, all of that good stuff. All up in Mercury. And Venus comes up two times, and that's what... Uh, it comes up uh, in Venus pops up on the chart in the air and in the earth. Mercury also in the air and in the earth. Two of swords, two coins, same kind of energy. Um, you know, just a more feminine. Let's say it's feminine. Same thing though. Two swords. Uh, actually, yeah, with the. Mm, yeah, true. And there's also going to be things that people don't want to look at, don't want to address, don't want to deal with, tend to purposely make themselves blind to. Let me get that clear. So that's both for Mercury and both for, uh, both for Venus. In the moon, the moon comes up three times. So I'm looking at the three of cups. So, and we're in the water energy. So that's happiness, celebration, part, uh, friendships, groups of individuals. All of that good stuff. So that might be going on during in that moon energy. The sun, surprisingly, even with Easter on the board, the sun does not come up at all. Even in the solar eclipse, it's not showing the sun, which makes good sense because during the solar eclipse, it's about the moon blocking the sun. So it's, you know, it, it makes perfectly good sense to me. But anyway, it was just interesting to look at the solar eclipse and all the little things that was happening between, you know, Easter, earthquake, leap day, leap year, and all that good stuff, and to get to look at what would possibly look like in the future. So anyway, I will talk to you all later for Cardi B, which is up for 9 o'clock. Talk to y'all later. Deuces.